<laughs> Absolutely. And a guy that we know is going to play D-line, Travion Williams out of Crystal Springs, Mississippi, 6'5", 254, according to the uh, 247 uh, platform here. National 280 recruit in the composite, 38 at his position, number 16 in the Magnolia State. Nate? Florida State fans need to go on, and if you haven't watched his highlight tape, you need to go on and just watch this kid. He plays quarterback in, co- in high school. He plays inside linebacker, plays outside linebacker. He's even played defensive back in sub packages. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he is a big kid that moves really well. So, you know, these are the kids that Florida State hasn't been able to land. You know, the, the college ready, come in ready as a freshman, physically not maxed out, but physically dominating a, 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 as a high school kid. And, and, and you watch him, again, kind of the same thing as Woody, super violent. Um, I, I think he's pretty advanced for a guy with his hand usage. Uh, and that's what, something about Bishop Thomas, too, we'll get to, is that a lot of these kids that play D-line in high school um, aren't really good with the use of hands, and, and, and they need to be coached up a lot there. But you can tell he's coached up really well, and, and he uses his hands and his length. He's got really long arms. He knows how to – how to create space off of the offensive linemen. So, uh, again, another one I'm super excited. He came to the elite camp for, for Florida State, and he just dominated that camp. And from that moment on, um, you know, Florida State became the favorite. Uh, um, you know, they were talking to him a little bit before that camp. Um, you know, one thing that Norvell, and we, I think we talked about it here a little bit, is his ability to evaluate. He does a really good job there. And, you know, they kind of – saw him on some film and invited him to that camp. And, and, you know, he showed everything that he, he sh- showed on the film. So, I mean, six, five, two fifty. you know, Florida state hasn't had that in a, in a, in a while. And, you know, he's an explosive guy who can move really well. So another great get. Mm-mm. No, you haven't had that kind of size coming right out of high school and sitting at that defensive end. Uh, just the kind of, special athlete he gets offered early in june Mm -hmm. this kind of came out of i wouldn't say like out of nowhere nowhere but it kind of was just a i think he made his decision right there like saying hey this is it i'm just gonna go and seal it up right now you also had jerry jones who's been a big recruiter for fsu who's current uh, defensive back and he's been working a lot i mean also with uh quarterback 2023 quarterback uh chris parsons Mm -hmm. who's also a very talented cat jerry jones has been doing a lot of stuff helping out this staff definitely in the mississippi area and you know it's cool to see the video whenever he did commit in front of everybody that was there on that official visit um dinner that they were at and you know jerry and jones is back there behind him you know celebrating and all happy so uh you know th- it's going to show that you know norvell is also using his own abilities and his staffs but you know making sure that you know these little kind of intricacies and connections like a Jerry and Jones can come in and help a lot from, you know, going back to Jerry and Willis, who we might talk about later, you know, Gaynor was the number one guy. He hosted Jerry and Willis that whole entire week. And that's a guy that you want to have. That's an alpha guy on FSU's team. You know, he, he represents Florida state very well. He's, you know, grew up here in Tallahassee. Amari Gaynor's all over him the whole weekend. And it seems like things are heading in the right direction for them to get him back from Georgia tech. So uh, just looking at Norvell and what he's trying to do. Nate, in different kind of ways. Nate, quick question of you before we go on and talk about the rest of the class. One of my areas of concerns when I look at this class right now is that out of the 14 quote-unquote hard commitments, only seven are from the state of Florida. And out of the five since Friday, only one of them is from the state of Florida, from the Orlando area. Does that concern you at all? Do you think, you know, and, and we talked about this last time, last time I was on the show two weeks ago, that, I, you know, you know, the South Florida area, Orlando area, Tampa area, that's the primo recruiting in my opinion, do, would you like to see Norvell and the staff go back to focus on recruiting the state of Florida? Or do you think right now that's more of a fact of just being honest, we're number three out of the big dogs at this point? Um, I, I don't know if they're number three anymore. Uh, just a perception. I think they've done a good job over the past three to five months. Um, but you know, I, I think you look at Georgia. I think you look at South Georgia. Um, should always be a hotbed for Florida State. Mm-hmm. So Sap is from South Georgia. Charlton's from South Georgia. 
Um, you know, Woody's from South Alabama, I believe. Uh, it's still a region that you you want to hit and, and go after. And Mississippi, you know, has I think been vastly underrated for the last ten to fifteen years in terms of, of players that come out of that state. Um, I, I am a big fan of, of, of Florida recruiting, but when you look at all, at the offensive line, it's not a it's not a phenomenal year in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at defensive line, um, other than a couple, you know, I think five to eight guys, it's not a great year at defensive line, especially in the interior for, for the class nationally. Uh, when you look at DB, uh, you know, you have, you have Travis Hunter committed. He's originally from Florida. You have Sam McCall, who's from Florida. Mm-hmm. So you have those still athletes that you really are trying to target. Um, it's not a great year for wide receiver in the state of Florida. So I, I think it's situational. But I do always I, I am in that that boat that you gotta hit Florida first and then go to Georgia, Carolina, Louisiana, you know, start in the south and then work your way up. But I'm I'm not mad at it right now. I think that, you know, in, in the state of Florida they they are working hard on guys like like Glover, um, you know, Marvin Jones Jr. You, you look at those those kind of guys and you look at twenty twenty three, they really are hitting South Florida really hard. Um, but you know, I, I think this year in Florida, it's not a great year in certain spots that they have to hit uh, home runs in, and that's offensive line is number one. 